Hi, Detroit cricket lovers. Welcome to uh, DCL talk show on DCL radio. Today is um, August 2nd, uh, probably last. This is the last month of uh, the season. After this, um, of a regular season, after this, we'll be into playoffs. Okay. And um, what best about today's show is, you know, after a very long gap, Venkat Vadnala joined the show. And uh, we have our regular analyst, I'm Kim Piaz with us, and uh, KK will be joining a little late today. So before uh, jumping into our show, I would like to say thanks to each and every um, player, uh, empire who did uh, a wonderful job last week. And, um, and another fortunate thing is all 15 games happened without any interruptions. And, and next Saturday also looks a little gloomy with the with the rain prediction, hopefully, um, um, I, I, I'm praying and hoping that um, all games will uh, go uninterrupted. With that, let me welcome um, uh, <clears throat> our senior partner, Venkat Vadnala. Welcome to the show, Vadnala. Hey, Jagan. Um, thank you for having me, and uh, welcome all the DCL listeners. I I am, although I'm not part of uh, the analyst uh, for all these weeks, but I've been uh, part of as a listener once in a while, not every week though, but whenever I had time, I was turning on my phone and listening. And it's it's fun to be on the other side and listen to our analysts and try to take uh, things uh, how they tell a story. So it was good and uh, happy to be back. Good. Uh, uh, welcome, Imti. Uh, hello uh, to all the DCL uh, radio show listeners. Uh, welcome to another exciting week. Uh, like Jagan said, we have had the full 15 games last week and hopefully we'll have the same coming weekend. So somehow your voice is, um, you know, um, it's audible, but it is not clear. Okay, I'll try to be loud and clear. <laughs> okay. okay. Any better? Can you talk again? Hello. Any better? Yeah, that's good. Um, okay. Before uh, KK joins our show, um, Padnala, how is season going for Falcons? Well, definitely um, going okay as compared to last year. You know, I mean, last year we were ne never uh, in the in the competition. We couldn't make off make it uh, to the playoffs. Uh, hopefully, again, although it's not guaranteed this season uh, at least uh, things are looking good at least challengeable so if you get a couple more wins probably under our belt uh, there's definitely a chance to take part of uh, uh, the DCL playoffs this season so who are all your opponents going forward i mean you have another three games to go right yep yep we have three games uh, our next game is fhcc and then we will have uh, um uh, um panthers and then finally after a break we'll have the knockers Okay, see, so the only thing at this time which you can consider a tough one is knockers. Is it okay to say that? Yes, definitely knockers. And also, I mean, we won't, we can't take uh, uh, Panthers. I mean, uh, Rohit, you know, True. playing his best of his uh, uh, career, uh, he'll he'll be a threat for any opponents. Um, so, Panthers would, I mean, we lost to Panthers last year. So, I, I mean, we still remember that game. So, uh, we can't take that team easy. And I know for sure Deepak will also be uh, looking forward to that game and uh, um, come up with a good team and with a challenge. Uh, even uh, Panthers are uh, fighting for that uh, uh, spot in the playoffs. Okay. Exactly. exactly. Next, two, they have four more games left, and uh, I'm sure um, you know uh, they'll they'll bring their best out there on the field. With that, let's. Um, Get into our first game of the night, Legends versus um, Brownstown. Uh, I everybody predict, predicted uh, Legends to win. Am I correct, MT? Yes, Jagan. Uh, last week, I think uh, we all jumped onto the bandwagon saying that Legends will be the winner for this game. Uh, but Brownstown uh, proved everybody wrong in this game. So. If we yeah. go into the, uh, especially uh, if you look at the uh, scorecard, Brownstone's uh, bottom bottom four really scored really well. 
uh, which is a game saver for them. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Interrupt you. <laughs> Please go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, like Brownstone just uh, uh, proved every analyst wrong from our last week prediction, and I think uh, they, like like we were uh, uh, saying last week, maybe probably Brownstone is like uh, mostly out of the season, and uh, they might not make it to the playoffs. But I think this win. He's saying otherwise, and I think they have four more games left in their uh, uh, coming up uh, weeks. So I think they still have a pretty good chance to make it to the playoffs, at, at least at this point of the season. So if we go into the details of this game, uh, Brownstone versus Legends. Legends won the toss and elected to field. I think considering uh, they're comfortable chasing the big scores with this new ball, I think uh, Legends went with that thought. But uh, uh, at least. It worked for them uh, in the first uh, in the first uh, quarter of the game, like the first twelve overs, where they were able to pick wickets and like they had Brownstone reeling uh, for forty eight for six in the eleven overs. So th- they they got the start that they wanted by field wickets. They got main batsmen like uh, Saad and uh, uh, Tanvir. But I think Brownstone also kind of shuffled their batting order because I see some uh, good batsmen coming down the order like Yasser uh, Virk and then Rashid Malik also coming so <coughs> down the order. And I think that that kind of uh, put the uh, legends bowlers uh, uh, in, a, in a spot of bother. The lower uh, half of the batting like, scored the majority of the runs with highest scorer being Yasser. With 28 runs, and then Rashid Malik and Mahmoud Hussain playing supporting roles in the end, like for 16 and 14 runs. And I think uh, extras also 26 extras by Legends bowlers, kind of uh, uh, paying the price there, uh, uh, helping Brownstone score those 119 runs. And again, uh, like looking at Legends bowling, I think they are missing a couple of bowlers that have been performing well for for them throughout the season, uh, like Mur- uh, if I'm not wrong, Mur. Murugan, I think that was the bowler who was picking up wickets for them. And uh, like they, they used like eight bowlers overall. So that says Narnia something that they were... That right, like Narne is their frontline bowler and he's missing in this game. Uh, I think he, he, he was absent because he had to play a 40 game. That's what I heard. And uh, yeah, like you're using eight bowlers and then you don't have your frontline bowlers. I think that kind of... Uh, Puts the picture out there that helped Brownstone like come back into the game very strongly in the second half of their batting. Uh, going into the second half of the game, like 119 and still legends backing their batting, I think they should have had a pretty good chance, but Brownstone proved them wrong. I think uh, legends were in the game for most of the game. Uh, they were trying to catch up with the run rate and be be there and stay there in the game. Uh, but again, like Brownstone had their opening, uh, their uh, batsman falter. I think even Legends were uh, uh, Legends lost some quick wickets in the front. They were at at one point thirty five or six in the ten overs. So uh, again, the same uh, same way how Brownstone did. Like the second half of the batting kind of stayed there, put up some runs, and Aditya Ramesh scoring thirty nine runs, the bulk of the score, and then supporting hands from Nitin seventeen, and then Gautam up the order 14 runs these are the standout contributions and i think the most important thing here was i think uh brownstone's bowling where the number of extras is only seven i think that kind of shows how disciplined their bowling was and helping them get those wickets and also restrict legends uh within the uh desired target uh if you look at the bowling figures for brownstone javed iqbal the pick of the bowlers three three wickets for 15 runs and then supporting hands from each and every bowler like i i really like this brownstone bowling card because they have their five set bowlers bowling all the five overs and like i think they had a set plan with the bowling attack there so all in all i think brownstone has made a statement with this game and they are still in the playoff race so good luck to brownstone and hard luck legends and i wish legends good luck for the remaining of the games no, uh, in very, fact, uh, in the, I wanted to add something. You know, Legends actually played with the second string team because uh, Srikant Narnam was not there. Then you don't didn't have Arjun Adabala, then uh, Abhinay in the batting department, and then Murugan who was in the top charts of bowling department. So they did not have four key players for the for this game. Is it, is it the best part is you know they lost because of just one bowler, I guess. You know, Gautam Kumar Radhakrishnan. He gave. 
17 runs in one uh, one over that's not at all a problem giving that many runs is okay but bowling six no balls is definitely seen in uh, dcl at least that's what i felt okay so i heard he bowled three beamers so he was taken off the bowling they did not change the bowler's name because uh, another bowler finished his quota there oh okay but somehow it is not showing up and i see satish kumar uh, uh, bellum konda bowling one over giving away five runs maybe he is the one who filled in for him. okay i mean uh, with that so, let's get into our uh, next game uh, welcome to the show kk uh, thanks okay. kk and let's get into krcc versus tamil pasanga kk your thoughts yeah yeah going into this game krcc was a clear favorite and uh, you know they had some setback when they initially started the batting they were 31 for 6 at the end of eight overs but then you know ashish kotnes who was declared the man of the match he stitched the innings together he was making use of the rest of the players there and you know he was the one who got out at the very end in the 23rd over he scored those 25 runs but most importantly there were good contributions from lavanan setu sharma and then abhishek verma who scored 19 runs so all together put in uh, they were able to reach 103 in 23 overs and tamil pasange you know they did not have one of their prime batsmen this season arjun chitiman is not uh, playing this game and they were always on the back foot when they see a triple they just go to be chased and uh, you know you, you can see it in their batting order as well except for bhargav srinivasan no one actually you know put on a show there he bhargav was the only person who scored those double digit runs and the rest of the folks if you see the score card there are four zeros and uh, you know something it was all down hill for some special thing but we have to commend one more contribution here from uh, krcc arjun reddy was the pick of the bowlers uh, five wickets for 14 runs in his five overs so that's uh, five wicket haul is always special that combined with uh, ashish contribution in batting you know that sealed the game for krcc and krcc is now definitely in the race for the playoffs okay um the next game of the night is raptors versus warriors and raptors on the paper uh, the best team uh, in dcl this year and they proved it on <clears throat> in the field also with this game your thoughts vadnala yes yes uh, jagan raptors are definitely one of the best uh, uh, in the on the paper and also in the league so far they are the one of the four teams that are unbeaten so far i mean in the standards glcc stallions still haven't lost a game and unbeaten and uh, proving to be a stronger teams and uh, good contenders for the uh, uh, playoffs coming to this game i mean i'm pretty sure nobody would have expected the result to be a, a one sided game i'm pretty sure warriors would come and uh, give a tough uh, and good challenge to raptors uh, but the scorecard doesn't say that i mean if you see that they they were tumbled for 43 and their highest partnership comes from the opening partnership which is nine runs so that tells that you know they were losing wickets constantly and consistently and uh, couldn't couldn't find somebody who could support the only batsman or the uh, the top batsman in their lineup was anil and then sachin did get into the double figures but again nobody else everybody you know lost their wicket uh, for mere one or two runs that tells that um, raptors were definitely on fire and were sh- pumped up with getting wickets uh, timely and if you see this bowling scorecard rohan and navpreet and karan uh, were the um, bowlers that probably got two or more and when it comes to uh, you know uh, chasing a mere total of 43 i mean definitely everybody will be uh, would like to jump in and put a, a batting partnership or would it put a batting performance and that's exactly what happened there uh navpreet i mean just eight balls 14 runs with 1416 and then rohan and saurabh also hitting a couple of sixes and uh getting to the score card of or chasing to that total with the mere uh, seven overs under seven overs tells that they were definitely uh, top in all departments and uh, would congratulate them and uh, tough luck to warriors and good luck to the next of the rest of their games okay the next uh, game of the night is kites versus falcons vadnada you want to take honors or you want to hear it from imti i would like to hear it from imti <laughs> <laughs> okay imti i was i was actually volunteering it to give it to venkat uh, because he was obviously in the game and he would know more details about the game uh, but yeah i can i can take it too 
Venkat, do you want to go or? Yep. I mean, it's up to you, Ibti. I mean, yeah, I can go because I was in part of the game and I can probably I can tell a better story uh, what happened in, in the field. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go for it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, Falcons won the toss, elected to field. I mean, definitely we didn't want to bat first because um, we wanted to actually um, get a bonus point. And uh, in my perspective, getting a bonus point is easier if you are actually chasing and if you can chase it in the 21.3, uh, rather than um, trying to get everybody out on the opposite end uh, with the with the less than 15 runs is 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 tougher than chasing, and with the lineup that we had, we thought we we can definitely uh, get them out less uh, and then chase it fast. That was the plan, and it went as per the plan. I mean, uh, if you see, I mean, they were actually 55 runs in 20 overs, uh, 56 runs. They lost their seventh wicket. But um, I can tell one thing in this. Um, see, I mean, I can tell one thing this season is that you can't take anybody at the seven down, eight down, nine down, anybody easy, honestly speaking, because this ball travels. And if they can connect and if they can pick up too few balls, they can definitely score runs. And if they can put mere 10 runs, 20 runs from each individual build partnerships. Anything can happen in this uh, in this season. I mean, this with this ball. So that's exactly happened there. I mean, Vamshi Yadagiri and um, Chaitanya they were actually chipping in few runs, not hitting boundaries per se, but you know they definitely were hitting the ball hard and were putting good um, uh, running together between the wickets and scoring quick runs. Took the game and uh, actually we, we were surprised that we, we gave them 84 runs uh, when we were thinking that we could get them out for 70, 65, 70. Um, having said that, you know, we could still, th- we thought that we can definitely chase it. I mean, we had a good uh, batting lineup and, uh, but that was not the case. We lost quick, 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 two quick wickets for the four. Um, but then again, as always, our Savior, I mean Sudhir, uh, he's wonderful this uh, season. He's picking uh, the ball very well, seeing the ball very well, and um, if you see his average, is always um, his average is in 30s, and he's doing pretty good this year for Falcons, and is one of our key batsmen, top, and doesn't give his wicket away. He was the one who actually stood, and um, Venki and Sai, and finally Siddharth gave him uh, good support to get to the total. And we got lucky, honestly speaking, because we got two boundaries in the power play that we took. And we were able to go as per the plan and get the total within uh, the 21.3. So uh, hard luck to Kites um, and congrats to Falcons. You know, before I go to our, our next game, uh, uh, can you say about these Kites, what kind of team is this? Look, Kites, Kites is a good bunch. I mean, they have definitely young talent in the group. I mean, uh, I think uh, what I can tell is that they don't have pace attack, but they have a disciplined bowling attack. And if anybody is really playing this team, they can come prepared, to be honest. And, I mean, you have to earn runs. Yeah, I mean, I've seen every team has few pace bowlers, and you can pick their pace, take it to your advantage, and score quick runs. But with this team... Absolutely no way you can do that. I mean, everybody is uh, medium, slow spin, and uh, you have to pick up the pick the gaps and hit the ball hard and uh, earn your runs. They are not going to give it uh, with their pace or anything like that. So, but they do definitely uh, are energetic, and I heard that they didn't have their core or full team. So I don't know really, honestly, but um, I think they what 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 the team I've seen is definitely uh, uh, a good young spirited players okay with that let's get into our next game glads versus tca knights kk oh, another one sided game match again we knew glads was the clear favorites and you know despite their one loss against uh, detroit bulls they came back very strong and you see another dominating performance from glads they got uh, tca knights out for 67 and Look at the bowling lineup. You have Aditya, Anit, Taif, Sudhir, and Satya. And Vaibhav went for some runs, but you know the rest of the bowlers finished the task for them. And uh, TC and Knights did not have any partnerships going. That is what is uh, worrisome for the Knights because you see their wickets were consistently falling, and except for uh, three players and uh, some contribution from Ajay at the bottom scoring those 12 runs, 
they did not have much to take out of this game. They got bundled out for 67. But again, Glass did what they are supposed to do in their uh, batting department. Uh, there are many games this season where they were just finishing the games up in a hurry, you know, less than 12 overs, 13 overs. Uh, the same thing applied to this game as we wrapped up the game in 11 overs. And uh, Hardeep, who is having a wonderful season, is the only guy you know, who made the difference. So he whacked the five sixes, stood not out and scored 45 runs and 29 goals. And uh, they have one such innings. But, uh, you know, you usually wrap up games like these, uh, scoring those 70 odd runs. So, again, nothing much to talk about in PC United's bowling department. Uh, Pranish uh, was tidy at the beginning, but, you know, I thought he should have. When, when a bowler is doing good and when you have low scores and you want to put pressure on the opposition, go for it, get him, uh, get going with the entire spell. Probably if Pranish and... Uh, would have bowled few more overs, you know. He he was in good touch, so he would have picked up few more wickets. That is what I could say. Okay. Uh, our next game of the night is TCS Stallions versus Knockers. Everybody predicted Knockers to win, but uh, somehow um, they did not uh, live up to our prediction. Uh, your thoughts, Vadnala? Okay, I thought uh, you were switching the games and giving this to Imti, but um, uh, I was there in the field, so I can probably go with this also. Um, yes, I mean, definitely knockers were the favorites, but at the same time, we all have to see Stallions uh, unbeaten so far. I mean, can't take anybody any anybody easy. And uh, I'm pretty sure Zawad would have had, you know, uh, uh, thoughts of beating this team to prove them again. Everybody is that they are the team to be uh, uh, looking at. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, uh, if you see with the good bowling attack that Knockers have, they were able to build partnerships, not initially, but actually um, their middle order definitely was successful with Ishan, Sadiq, and Jawad, you know, being being the front line uh, in the middle and uh putting some good partnerships and getting the score to 98, although it's not a three-digit, but if you see the bowling attack, Deepak, Arun, Praveen, Manju, Suhant, and Pranit, I mean, they, they definitely uh, had a good bowling lineup. Uh, the only expensive was Pranit, um, getting, getting there, uh, giving almost 27 runs. And I'm pretty sure one of his over, I think, uh, definitely was expensive. I'm, I wouldn't think otherwise uh, he would getting you he would be getting four overs. But that's that's the team Stallions has. I mean, that's the lineup that Stallions has. So, um, again, when you put 98 on the total and uh, when you also have equally talented uh, bowling attack, they definitely had that spirit of uh, going after knockers. And I think knockers did, you know, I mean, literally failed in their top order. I mean, I was in the next ground and watching uh, once in a while. They were losing their wickets like every five minutes. I mean, if you see their lineup, I mean, Vijay got out, Rao got out, Suhan, then Prabhu, and then Arun, and then Praveen. Once Praveen got out, I think their their whole <laughs> uh, batting uh, um, hopes were down the drain. But then Ganesh and Manju, I mean, I think they they played fantastic. I mean, I was able to watch their few shots at the end uh, before leaving the field, and they were hitting the ball uh, pretty hard and getting those and I think there was only one if you see the whole lineup of knockers I mean only one time crossing the line what that was from Manju in, in the form of six and I think it was in the tail over so they they definitely failed in their batting department and I think they are now in a tough spot I mean uh, nothing is easy especially pool B is uh, you have two unbeaten teams and then you have two teams that are coming there and challenging, knocking on the door, KRCC, I mean, Panthers, Canton 11, Falcon. So everybody has an equal chance. And so that makes Knockers' job very tough. They have three more games. And I'm pretty sure they will definitely be uh, um, coming to the drawing board and put up a new plan on how they can actually win all their three games. And those three, out of those three games, I'm pretty sure they will be Winning the next two, one, um, I mean, Canton 11 and Southfield Super Kings, although we can't take Canton 11 easy. I mean, they're also in the in the, in the the chase of that playoff 
So they, they will have to work hard, and then finally they'll be playing Falcons. So uh, that's the game that I'll be looking forward to. And uh, I, yeah. I want to ask a question here. Do you still think Nakas is a formidable bowling unit like the previous years? Well, I mean, um, KK, if you see on the paper, yes. I mean, but again, with this ball, I have seen personally that uh, um, it's not easy to bowl, especially uh, you have to be spot on to get wickets or spot on to uh, put some uh, low scoring over. So that's that's the challenge with this ball. And I mean, I wouldn't, it's, it's, it's definitely a batsman's game. I mean, with this ball. So bowling attack, I mean, if you have more bowlers, um, then you have a good chance that you can mix and match and try to get them out sooner. Yeah, yeah the reason I asked is because uh, Knockers gave away 89 runs to Tamiz Pasenge. They gave away 99 to Panthers. And then uh, they gave 132 to Pokeries. And then GLCC they knocked them over with 109 runs. And then in this game, TCS Island scored 98. So they you know, come against any tough opponent, you know, they're leaking runs. And uh, last year, they were able to defend scores of 50s and 60s. But uh, this year, I don't think their bowling is working out for them. It's, it's, it, this league is no more uh, bowler's game. And especially with this ball, margin of error is very less. Okay, you know, just to give an example, there are uh, uh, I have seen some games where full tosses were giving uh, wickets to bowlers. But with this ball, I doubt uh, that will happen. Okay, with that, let's uh, let's get into our next game: Indus Thunders versus um, MI Rangers. Imti. Yes, Jagan. Uh, so, this game, uh, Indus Thunders were clearly the favourites going into the game. Uh, if MI Rangers had any outside chance uh, of staying alive, I think this was the game that they had to win at any cost. But unfortunately, they came up against Indus Thunders, who are uh, the previous champions and are doing very, very good in this season also. So, if you look at the... Uh, uh, if you go into the details of the game... Indus Thunders uh, batted first uh, thanks to MI Rangers who won the toss and elected to field. Uh, I think they wanted to uh, uh, know the score uh, and chase that down. Like that, that could be the thought process here because I, lately I have been seeing more teams uh, fielding first to get an idea of the total and then maybe uh, progress this progress their chase accordingly uh, because last. Last few games that we have been hearing analysis to, I think most of the teams are fielding first. So, uh, just uh, an observation. So, in the Thunders, I think without uh, uh, they, they were missing Manoj Singh and uh, Dinesh Pandeti in this game. Uh, but still, I think Sandeep Gopu stepped up to the occasion when their main batsman was not in the fee, uh, in the team, uh, scoring a 38 runs from 50 balls. Uh, he was the mainstay of the batting and had a very good partnership for the third wicket along with Srikanth Yerua. The biggest partnership of the uh, uh, the first innings, uh, like 40, 42 runs, and I think they they had the runs uh, flowing throughout the innings, uh, but the the main observation here is like they they couldn't finish the twenty five overs. They got all out in twenty twenty two overs. So uh, a, a slight bit of moral victory maybe for MI Rangers that they could pick up the ten wickets, bundle down the opponent for hundred runs, which is kind of achievable and and below par score this season. Uh, if you look at the bowling figures for MI Rangers, I think it was a collective effort. Uh, Venkat being the pick of the bowlers with three wickets and then a couple of wickets each for Ifti and Abhilash. Uh, like I said, batting mainstay Sandeep, 38 runs and uh, well supported by Vijay, 14 runs and then Varma for 15 runs. So going halfway into the game, uh, 100, 102, always chaseable with this new ball. But I think they didn't have that uh, uh, good start in the beginning and they kind of left uh, uh, lost quick wickets uh, in the middle and then they could never recover from it. The only uh, mainstays in the batting were Aditya with 15 runs and then Shravan 13 runs very, very down the order. And like the middle order completely kind of uh, failed here. And uh, if, you, if you look at the fall of the wickets also, like they were losing wickets consistently for every three, four runs, five runs. And they also... Uh, looks like they lost wickets in bunch where they lost two wickets for 34 runs and three wickets when their score was 35. So, they were like 35 or 8 at one stage. Four order innings from Shravan and Sandeep Gaud. 
that they could at least come to that respectable score of 64 all in all uh, that was not enough and uh, if you look at indastan as bowling i think uh, like again like very decent uh, disciplined bowling vijay rahul chetan each picking up two wickets and uh, pick of the uh, four four wickets for seven runs so this this kind of shows thunder is like a, a, a champion team because even even when they don't have their main players the, their bench strength is so strong and they can come up victorious with such a dominating performance i think uh, we 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 all have to watch out for indus thunders for another like long run in the playoffs also here yeah. so congrats to indus thunders and hard luck mi rangers and probably uh, gates are shut for mi rangers this this season okay the next game of the night is mcc miles versus fcc kk so jagan every season when you talk about the previous season right you always remember one game you know which uh, was always hanging in balance and this is one such game that happened for us and uh, i was looking at the stats and i believe this is the highest ever score chased down in dcl over all the years you know i see mcc miles have once again not uploaded their score card but you know i can give you a gist into what happened uh, so mcc miles batted first and then uh, Uh, Venkat Kongara was the was the star performer for them. He scored about 35 runs. That was well supported by Pranit, who opened the innings. He scored about 18 runs, and then uh, Sanjay Alangovan, uh, you know, he scored 18 runs. He played a uh, slow innings this time because Sanjay wouldn't uh, actually play that kind of innings. Uh, but in this game, he was very very particular about not losing the wicket and building the partnerships. And at the very end, uh, you know. even at the end over right they were only scoring over 6 runs or 7 runs and they were only trying to take singles and doubles and that import that even explains uh, the importance of rotating the strike very often and uh, you know we knew that it was a batting pitch and also uh, when we went to bat uh, the only uh, point we had in mind was we had sujan batting at number 10 and we had nine other batsmen in the team so in this game we went with more number of batsmen we can actually bowl because over the years we have always seen nexus is not a strong bowling unit but you know we have chased down targets uh, when we played as a team together and uh, coming to this game we have lost wickets but even though we kept on losing wickets batsman was still playing that we were, we were able to score uh, uh, consistently and uh, at one stage we were about 65 for 6 in the in the 14 overs and we still had about 70 runs to Uh, take but we had Tejo and uh, Rahul batting and we had three more other ba- players who can actually bat. So uh, and Rahul is the one who took the game away from MCC Miles. He was not just t- he was not taking the risk and he waited, waited, waited till one over who, which could change the game and the 20th over uh, gifted us 16 runs and uh, there the tables turned and he was well supported by Karthik Ramachandra at the end but. Uh, I I also want to add one point here. Teju is playing wonderful this year. Uh, he's been able to chip, play those chip shots and get the runs. He's not taking the risks and you know, he's playing very confident. That's a positive sign for us. And uh, uh, yes, we are we are glad that we chased down this target because this was a knockout game for both FCC and NCC teams. Uh, so we are one one more step closer to playoffs. We have three more games. We have to win every single game to get into the playoffs. Okay, the next game of the night is Pokeries versus GLCC. It's all batting from the first over of GLCC to the last ball that bowled by GLCC. Venkat, Vanala, your thoughts? Yes, yes. I mean, it's definitely I think a batting bonanza because you know three twenty four runs uh, unheard. I mean, you know, combined. Um, but i think that all started with glcc uh, coming out of guns and putting a massive 194 um that speaks that you know they do have a lot of talent and they do have a mixture of uh, batsmen who can actually chip in runs and who can go after and uh, blast and get those um, sixes and i think uh, none other than the seam i think who who can be we expect to hit bang and uh, hit six sixes and i heard that roshan uh, roshan actually also hit four sixes in a row in ranjit over so i think that that was probably uh, uh, a good thing to see or good side to have but i think 
definitely GLCC with top on on the on the from the go and hitting those uh, runs. And I think if you see the scorecards, I mean nobody actually were even except Tanmay. I think he's the only one who was actually playing, uh, uh, trying to save his wicket and getting only five runs of 18 balls. But if you see the others, they were all pretty good. Uh, the strike rate is about 100, and that's that's the reason I think they got the massive 194. Uh, if you see Pokeries, I mean, they were definitely struggling with their bowling. You know, I mean, nobody could chip in and get the breakthroughs. Uh, and uh, they tried all different uh, lineups. I mean, uh, eight different bowlers bowling. And except Ranjit, I mean, I think uh, he probably went too many on in his last over, but he was the spot-on bowler for the team, getting three wickets um, in his first four overs and then uh, giving away those runs, those runs um, to Roshan actually uh, puts his economy at a higher rate, but I'm pretty sure he, he was the strike bowler. Uh, if you see other than him, nobody actually, you know, uh, could really challenge GLCC and get those breakthroughs. And when you have a total like 194, uh, you kind of give up. Uh, you, you know that, you know, it's not going to happen. Or even if you think it's going to happen, I mean, it won't be a 100% motivated uh, group. And that's that's that that was probably. But I think when you have a couple of players on the top trying to uh, be like a play like an underdog and try to play like, you know, there's nothing to lose kind of thing. And I think that's exactly what we know did. Put in a, a good 26 runs with three V4s and one sixes, I think, pumped up. And they probably all went in the same uh, uh, spirit and followed Vinod and Satish and Vignesh and uh, Ranjit. And, you know, if you see all these players, I think they all went with the same spirit that, hey, nothing to lose. Let's go offer it. And in the in the mix, I think they were able to get those 130 runs. And I think that's a decent score to put. And they might have thought that probably if they could have got the breakthrough from Nassim and uh, Roshan, they would have probably won the game. And, and that's exactly what they would have thought after the after the match. So overall, good game. I mean, uh, it's definitely a, a decent uh, bowling, I mean, decent batting from GLCC. And Roshan, he's also in in good, um, you know, uh, he's, he's in good momentum. And he, I've seen him playing against Falcons. He's the one who actually took the game away from Falcons in the last over, scoring 21 runs and taking the game away from Falcons. And here I would I see the same thing, hitting those 40 runs. And the same with this 54, taking the game away from uh, Pokeris. And Pokeris definitely have to be tough. Uh, we should be should be looking for uh, uh, winning the next games to be in contention for the playoffs. And uh, lastly, I would say congrats to Akash, who who is the gem of a bowler uh, and uh, picking those four key wickets. And uh, congrats to him and GLCC and hard luck pokeries. Okay, with that, let's get into our next game: Lions versus uh, Southfield Super Kings. Uh, I thought it's uh, uh, it will be a um, closely contested uh, game, but uh, two. To our analyst surprise, SSK dominated this game. Uh, your thoughts, KK? Yeah, yeah. Jed and I picked uh, SSK to be the favorites for this game uh, because Lions have not had a good season, but you know, at least SSK has been piling up those 100 plus runs, and uh, uh, you know they did exactly uh, that. There were equal contributions for from about five players in the SSK team. We know Ramesh Babu, Arpit. Siva and Tejeshwar, everyone contributed into the double digits. And when you have five players contributing in double digits and backed by extras, uh, you get to 100. So they were able to score those 119, but it was a complete uh, team effort in the batting department. Uh, you know, everybody tried to contribute. There were contributions of 8, 5, 3, 2, 2, but you know, all combined together, uh, that's a very good score against uh, Lions. And the Lions, when their batting started, they, they were never in the game. Uh, only Sesi and Vijay Kumar Vanam got into the double digits and the rest of the batsmen did not put up their hand. And, uh, you know, I, Lions, uh, I don't know, like, their performance is going down the hill every game. Uh, so this is another uh, black spot uh, for Lions in this season. And again, SSK in the bowling department as well. Uh, it was They were led by Philip Thomas, who used to play for Dynamics. He picked up four wickets for eight runs and well supported by their top three bowlers. Uh, Manjunata, Ramesh, and Sai Prasa should pick two apiece, and uh, that feels a victory for them. Okay, 
the next game of the night is dark horses versus blazers or till till uh, the previous game from the beginning of the season um it's it's <clears throat> with the change of the ball batting teams dominated batsmen dominated but in this game this is the only game i have seen in this season where bowlers dominated your thoughts imti uh yes jagan uh, i think probably uh just to some sum up this game i think this this game kind of reminded the past seasons of dcl where scores of 55 60 were like very much defendable when you had a good bowling unit uh i just wanted to put one thing up, up front that this it was nothing to do with the pitch nothing to do with the ground the ba- the ground was absolute belter it was a very good batting wicket but if you look at the score card it says a complete different story altogether uh going into the game dark horses won the toss and they let it to field uh like i said again another trend that i have been observing like teams are deciding to field first and i think they did a they, they actually took a good decision when when they look at the score card they got very quick wickets up front and we were like reeling down and we never recovered from the that early blows akarsh uh, like he bowled a dream spell in the beginning and pick up picked up four quick wickets and we were at at like 20 18 for 6 in in eight overs and like that is like all all our main batsmen were back in the hut and then we were actually looking down at a score like uh, we, we earlier this season we had a game against indus thunder where we were wrapped up for 36 and we were kind of looking at something similar again in this game but thanks to partnership between vimal and sham for the eighth wicket 30 runs partnership which is like gold dust when you look at the uh, perspective of the game 30 runs partnership which was very crucial in that stage and that took a, took the score to 59 in the end uh if you look at the bowling figures for dark horses they were like bowling very good disciplined bowling in the beginning uh like akash like i said four four wickets of five runs in four overs like he was the pick of the bowlers hitting those good good length areas and like our batsmen had just no answer to his bowling and then again good bowling from omer krishna bala all picking up two wickets each but uh one one observation that i had was like uh omer and krishna were like two bowlers where they picked up two wickets in their very first overs but they were removed from the bowling attack i am not sure what the idea behind that was but uh, i'll be honest and say here that if they probably continued bowling their overs we would have probably be all out for 30 runs uh that i don't know why the decision was made but that was uh, a blessing in disguise for our team where we uh, vimal and sham could put up that 30 runs partnership and get to a decent score of 59 uh going half into the innings uh, we definitely had nothing to lose so we just wanted to go out and try our best to uh give as much as a fight as possible and dark horses probably had uh, a little bit of complacency i think personally uh, that that led to that debacle where they 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 were very good in the beginning like the first four or five overs where they were like solid in defense and were not uh, giving away any uh, wickets at the same time they were also not scoring but they were at least having that intent to stay there and like they just wanted to play out uh, the main bowlers but once we got that initial two wickets i think shreyans just ran ran through that batting order the middle order where he picked up like three wickets in one single over and that put dark horses on the back foot and uh, after that they they really couldn't get back into the game because there was some tight bowling and uh, i think even though the, the scores are not too high but the dot ball pressure got to them and they kind of lost wickets in succession uh i don't see the fall of wickets here but uh, because i was in the game i can i can tell that like every other over there was something happening and there were like chances for wickets every time uh again the only resistance was very low down the order from omer and uh, jashwant when they were together we had to struggle for a period of like 4 5 overs where we were trying to wrap up the innings and uh, also get that bonus point and uh, luckily akshat uh, coming and wrapping up the innings uh in the end uh pick of the bowler shreyans for his five wicket haul in the five overs and then good uh, uh supporting role from akshat picking up those three wickets and uh, like i said like this was more uh, more of a game uh, to handle the pressure situation than uh, a contest between bat and ball i think uh 
hard luck to dark horses but i think they should have got this game actually okay very well put together the next game of the night is rockers versus detroit uh, bulls as expected uh, bulls won this game your thoughts kk so going to this game we all knew that detroit bulls are clear the favorites you know they have surprised uh, almost the entire community detail community when they beat the gladiators at their this season and going into this game you know, the bowl first and got uh, rockers within 61 runs rockers faltered throughout their batting order and uh, there was some resistance from gayadhar and uh, sandeep krishnappa at bottom of the order but you know, those runs of 13 and 12 did not really uh, alter the score card much and you know rockers were bowling out for 61 runs and uh, uh, tanuj uh, has been phenomenal with the ball he picked up five wickets in this five over spell giving away 16 runs and uh, you know that that broke the backbone of uh, rockers you know he was picking up wickets consistently and uh, he just wrapped up uh, rockers there and when it came to detroit bulls batting you know they had they had some setback initially in the second over uh, their opener deepu falling in the second over uh, but you know ban prakash muthi he did he not score many runs but you know he played about 27 balls made sure they do, don't lose another wicket uh, very soon and they got the partnership of 20 and then they lost the second wicket but after that uh, there were good contributions from their 3 4 5 uh, batsmen 13 17 and 11 and that sealed the game for them and one notable contribution here uh, in the bowling department of rockers is from sandeep krishnappa he bowled four overs gave away three runs which are wides and uh, there were 24 darts in uh, those four overs he picked up those two wickets so sandeep also batted well he scored about 12 runs and in the bowling department he was phenomenal on that day it is very hard to digest when that kind of a bad performance comes up in the losing cause but you know hard luck rockers and uh, very well played uh, sandeep as well as tanuj okay the next game of the night is uh, strikers versus risers after a very hard beating um from sister team raptors strikers came back very well to beat risers your thoughts vadnala yes definitely they they did come come i i would say it's a good comeback but again uh, uh, you can take uh, uh, a team like raptors and try to get a win unless and until you know uh, you get some support from all uh, departments uh, from one or the other player but coming back to this game i think strikers they were definitely the favorites and i think uh, we should all commend uh, to kapil's contribution to this team uh, coming to the front and leading this team and although they lost key some key players in the form of parthiv raj and others they are a team that always had a good mix and good talent in all departments and i think that's what is telling the story if you see the rankings they are in the top 3 i mean they are definitely going into the playoffs i can tell and uh, pool c is again um, it's it's not a team where you have a lot of challenge and i may think there are probably six teams that are fighting to get those five spots and uh, strikers one among uh, the key players in, in the form of batting i think proved again prag hitting at that uh, 50 runs uh, from near 48 balls i think tells the story right from the get go uh, being an opener and hitting those and not giving his wicket but getting those quick runs and hitting those fours and sixes in the mix i think uh, is is the one that we should always be looking forward to or anybody who should be looking to that kind of a a style of playing with this ball and i think we all know that they have a good batting middle and, uh, and that's exactly what happened here is kishore pankaj kapil chipped in those runs to get the, to the total of uh, a massive 157 i mean when you when you have uh, these players and when you have a uh, uh, mere bowling and i think if you're going guns and getting those runs is is what it's needed and that's exactly what the doctor ordered and i think uh, getting those 157 was key for them and put them uh, in the front and it was never uh, a game for risers to chase as you can see except two players pawan and satish nobody i mean not even a single person scored the the score of 3 runs and the only thing that was was extra so if you see i think risers although if you see on the board 87 runs but i think uh, um, only pawan and satish were the ones who contributed that to those uh, 87 runs and as we have seen the good batting mixture they do have a good bowling mixture in the form of gaurav raj and uh, and uh, ashwin vivek 
all chipping in and Suyesh, uh, Suyesh also getting those two quick wickets, I think. Put uh, uh, risers down and strikers up. Congrats and uh, good luck. Okay, the next game of the night is Toy Hawks versus Mustangs. I mean, this is what Toy Hawks have been dreaming for for years, dominating the game. And uh, finally, they did it. I, I'm sure they'll remember this game forever. Your thoughts, MT? Yes, uh, yes, Jagan. Actually, Troy Hawks, uh, just looking at the score, it's a completely dominating performance from them in both the bo- batting and the bowling departments. I think they had a complete game where uh, they can satisfyingly uh, look at the victory and like say that, yes, this is what we are capable of. Uh, going into the games, uh, Troy Hawks won the toss and they elected to bat. Batting first, they put up this massive score of 121. Uh, top three batsmen performing for them, like up front, uh, Rupendra Chaudhary, 38 runs, Archit Jain, 16, Sanjeev, 24, and then Venu, 11 runs. Like When you see the top order heavy, uh, scoring the bulk of the runs, it, it is a very good sign for any team. Uh, like If you see, the uh, the major partnership was for the second wicket, uh, like 54 runs. And uh, once they got that starting partnership, I think they had a couple more. And that helped them get to that big total. But one observation here is like once they got those runs initially, I think in the end, they were just going for their uh, big shots and kind of lost their way in the end. Uh, In the end, actually, it was a good comeback by Mustangs, I would say, because uh, from a score of 91 for one, um, they got out for 121, Troy Hawks. So like they lost like nine wickets within a span of 30 runs. So that is kind of a moral victory for uh, Mustangs, I think, there. Uh, going uh, half into the game, probably because of that losing th- so many wickets, uh, momentum could have been in Mustangs' favor. But like we have seen, Mustangs, except for one or two games, they couldn't really uh, show their batting uh, prowess in this season. Uh, they they should they would have needed like a very solid batting performance to overcome that 121 target. Uh, if you look at the bowling figures, uh, oh, actually there are no bowling figures for Mustangs, so. Again, another incomplete scorecard, so not much to talk there. Uh, would have loved to see who who was the uh, pick of the ballers there. Uh, just going through the batting scorecard for Troy Hawks, I think Bharat picked up three wickets, Nikhil picking four wickets. So, yeah, uh, I think uh, it was a good comeback uh, by Mustangs in the bowling department, but uh, they, they would have needed a real strong batting performance. And I can't see the batting scorecard as well here. Uh, 57, they got all out for 57 in 11 overs, so they did not even play the first half of their innings. Uh, kind of in a hurry, I guess. They lost wickets, and I think uh, the main reason for that is Sanjeev Nandal, who picked up six wickets in three and a half overs for just five runs. So, that speaks volumes about like uh, how uh, the batting, uh, the innings progress for Mustangs, where like when you have one bowler just running down the batting of the opponents, I think it's very hard to uh, for them to come back. Uh, like Again, like I said, Troy Hawks completely dominating performance and uh, would love to see more of such games from Troy Hawks and uh, making the pool more interesting. So, good luck, uh, Troy Hawks and hard luck, Mustangs. Okay, last game of the night is Safaris versus Indus Bolts where Indus Bolts dominated. KK, your thoughts? Uh, coming to this season, every team dominated Safaris, uh, to be very honest. And uh, going into this game, Indus Bolts you see, right from the onset, uh, they were playing aggressive, and uh, you ha- you see that you know Azimuddin Syed scoring those 40 out of 50 runs uh, in the previous game as well. Azim scored those 15 runs, and uh, in this game as well, he was the one who was holding the innings together. And uh, good contributions from their top five batsmen: 10, 9, 40, 26, and 10. And at the end of 17 hours, they were at uh, about 110 runs. So. Uh, they were running away with the game from the very onset. And, uh, you know, even the rest of the batsmen tried to contribute, scoring six runs, eight runs, and nine runs from Ravi, Rajit, and Abhijit. And they ended up at 148. And 148 is a score which was never chased in DC and going into this game with uh, against a new team like Safaris. Uh, I believe they were, they were high on confidence. And whenever the batsman scores those heavy runs, it gives the bowlers that flexibility and luxury of uh, trying various things and uh, also they will be very confident because they are backed by the runs and 
they bowl freely and uh, you you see it uh, there are eight bowlers tried by indus bowl so they they have so many runs and a new team and they were trying everything they were just enjoying the game and safari is i think uh, only one player to be spoken about here harish uh, ankaram he is the opening bowler for safari and the opening batsman for them he scored those 31 runs and uh, nothing more to talk about the rest of the batsmen no one even got into the double uh, figures so they were able to score 75 this is their highest score this season but you know they will learn from the mistakes they learn as they play dcl you know how things run here and uh, hard luck safari is what i would like to also congratulate indus bowl for their comprehensive victory winning by 73 runs is uh, never easy so congratulations on the bowl okay before we get into our predictions i just got a text from uh, satish uh, legends captain saying that um, uh, not sure if you are aware Siddiq Kirmani who played for TCS Stallions is none other than son of Indian cricketer keeper Syed Kirmani okay so with that let's get into uh, predictions Panthers versus Knight Riders are going to be um, you know um, very tough one and it will decide the fate of uh, especially Panthers okay Vannala Well I think yeah it's definitely a, a game to be uh, um watch to be watched in pool B I mean both teams are definitely uh, neck to neck uh Panthers in the 6th uh, spot and KRC is in the 4th spot and uh, I'm pretty sure Deepak will have good plans and Yogesh too but I think I'm going to go with Panthers this for this game Okay Imti uh I think uh, I'll go with KRCC Okay KK Now Panthers. Okay, Dark Horses versus Legends. Legends three zero. Any objections there? Okay. Yes, I'll, I'll, after I'll, last week's performance, yes. Okay, KECC versus Gladiators. Gladiators three zero. Any objections? Okay, game to watch this weekend is Indus Thunders versus Brownstone. This is going to be a great game. and um, you, you know uh tough to predict vannala your thoughts yes definitely uh, it's uh, tough to predict but again i'll still probably go with the uh, unbeaten team in the thunders here oh, imti uh yeah i, I would like brownstone to win and kind of cause some ripples in the pool but uh, just looking at the form i think in the thunders kk okay. so jagan i was talking to the legends captain uh, satish and he did mention that they were able to steal those two or three runs uh, because of the age factor of the brownstone players and uh, you know with indus thunders being a young unit uh, the same thing is going to happen again they are going to steal those uh, convert those singles to doubles and doubles to threes and uh, that is one major difference between both these teams so i would uh, give it to indus thunders okay so it is indus thunders 30 i hope um, uh, brownstone captain is listening this one canton 11 versus knockers uh, with the way knockers struggling um, this is a must win game for them i'm i'm thinking it is going to be 30 knockers any objections there uh, i will go with uh, canton 11 for this game because they are clearly coming up with a plan and also this week we have the corporate cup which means few of uh, the knockers players will be playing the corporate cup and they will not be playing the full squad so that gives some little advantage to canton 11 wow okay remaining all okay with that knockers winning this game mm-hmm. okay the next one is risers versus indus bowls uh this is another tough one uh vannala i'll pick indus bowls inti yeah bolts for me too okay okay make it 30 the rising star versus raptors vadnala with with uh um... <laughs> you, you can call it yeah uh, call it as 30 with raptors okay even after this um, corporate cup corporate cup means a lot of Yeah, I mean, if you see, if you see the uh, team roster of Raptors, I and mean, even if they lose four or five players, 
I would I would say that everybody else would love to get that uh, uh, chance to play a game and will come with guns. Agree. Okay, I think it is three zero. Any objections there? Okay, the next next one is Falcons. But yeah, somebody is saying something. In... No, no, no objections. But I think Raptors will still go with the full team as far as I know. Okay, the next one is Falcons versus FHCC. Uh, I I think it is uh, you know uh, I'm excluding Venkat here, so it is going to be two zero uh, Falcons. Any objections there? Okay. The next one is FCC versus FCC Agni, uh, two sisters. It's going to be a good one, and uh, this will uh, be. Very, this is going to be very important. This is very important game for both FCC uh, teams because uh, right now there are five and six. I think uh, I'll exclude uh, KK here. Vadnala. Yes, definitely they are. This is, I mean, they're very close in the rankings. Uh, but if you see FCC Agni have only lost one game as against FCC losing four games. And I think they should be happy to be just uh, one spot away from the playoffs. FCC should be looking to win this game, but I'm pretty sure FCC Agni will be putting a challenge and winning this game. Uh, I think I'll go with FCC for this game. Okay, the next one is Lions versus GLCC. Uh, I'm not giving any numbers here, so Vadnala. You can go 3 0. Imti? Absolutely 3 0. KK? I gave it to the GLCC early. Okay, then uh, the next one is Pokeries versus Kites. I'm thinking 3 0 Pokeries. Any objections? Okay, I guess no. Next one is Avengers versus uh, Detroit Blues. Uh, Detroit, uh, sorry, Detroit Bulls, Detroit Bulls 3-0. Hope no objections there. Okay. The next one is Blazers versus Blues. Um, I think it is 2-0 Blazers. Uh, yep. Any challenges? Vadnala or KK? Uh, Not asking him. Uh, okay. Yeah, Blazers. Okay, the next this one. This will be an interesting game. Uh, actually, this will be an interesting game, uh, Jagan, because... Uh, you know, Blues defeated MI Rangers and MI Rangers defeated Blazers and now Blazers and Blues are playing. So, we will see who will come out to be the clear winner of this game. Okay. The next one is MCC Miles versus uh, Safari. MCC Miles 3-0. Any objections? Nope. Okay. Uh, last game of the night is Dynamites versus Mustangs. I'm, uh, I think uh, Dynamites 3-0 here. No objections. Okay, with that, we have completed our predictions and we will close the show with the last words from our analyst, Vadnala. Well, thank you, Jagan. Thanks for having me and uh, nice to be part of the show again. Um, definitely gives me good memories and uh, looking forward to being part in the future if uh, we have any opportunity, even one of the key analysts of this year are not available. Uh, and thank you all the listeners. Uh, good to have you. I mean, uh, be part of this, and I'm hearing that every 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 week we are growing in the numbers of listeners, and I'm happy for uh, Jagan and the team here. Thanks for all the listeners for taking the time to listening to the show. Okay, but well, Nala, just, just to let you know that you know we need you every week. Okay, Imti. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank Venkat uh, for. Uh joining the show today uh thanks venkat and uh hopefully we get all the games this week uh like we said we were we were seeing some rain prediction for saturday uh not to spoil the uh the matchups hopefully we get all the 15 games and uh, some exciting games this week so hopefully uh everybody plays and has fun this weekend so all the best to all the playing teams and good night kk uh, so it was very nice to have Vadnala on the show. I think you know, we have to make him a uh, regular uh, again on the show. and it, it, Because he provides those insights into the game, which uh, gives us a different angle of looking at the teams and their performances and analyzing them for the future games. Whereas, uh, you know, coming to this week's games, again, we have some interesting matchups, especially on Saturday. Most of the Sunday games are one sided but Saturday games will be interesting with... Uh, few of our diesel players also playing the Carter Cup and we have to see how the teams come up with their balance 
the balance of the team so and also this week it's also going to uh, uh, the results are going to determine what are the teams not just going into the top 5 of the pools but also uh, we might get some more picture of who will be the 16th team because they getting into the playoffs is important no uh, doesn't matter if you are in the 12th spot or the 16th spot the 16th spot is spread across all the pools so the pools are also calculating those man- magical numbers which gives them the opportunity to get, get into the playoffs uh, so we will get some more clarity on that as we proceed uh, into this week's results so i really hope the games happen this week and uh, yep that's it from mine and uh, thank you all the listeners for uh, listening to the show and uh, you all have a good night thank you okay with that we will conclude tonight's tonight show keep listening this is dcl talk show on dcl radio good night